Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Now that we got the drawers done, we can start fitting them to the case. But before we can actually fit them to the case, we have to get the drawer runners in and the side to side uh, spacers put in. We still have some things to do before we can really start fitting those drawers. So let's get going on that first. We need to go ahead and put the drawer runners in um, and get them cut to size. Now this is a three quarter by three quarter on the bottom rail, so it'd be real easy just to cut a three quarter piece. Um, I carried that line over and then measured up on the inside so I can raise that rail just ever so slightly to account for my reveal in the bottom um, and still keep it flush with the bottom. So I'm going to cut my rails to that size and we'll get those glued in. Okay, I've cut all my stock. And I'll fit each one to each case individually. And now I've set my stop block and raised the height to account for that notch that needs to go around the leg on this inside runner. So we're just going to notch that out and give it a try fit. Okay, and there's the fit I can live with. It's notched into the sides, it's raised up, I don't know, maybe, maybe a 30 second somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, now we just got to do the same thing on the other three and then we'll fit the drawers. Okay, we have one more filler piece we need to add onto these drawer glides. Um, and that's, we need to fill this gap in here, at least a little bit of it, so that the drawer can't slop side to side. So I've got my measurement and I'm just gonna go get some leftover scrap stock and mill some stuff up there get it glued in place and in. Okay, so the scrap material I'm gonna use was our test leg. So it's not really good for anything else. I've tried joinery on it. I've tested domino depth. It's, it's, it's really not good for much else. And this one had a defect. So I'm just gonna get the stock I need out of that spare leg and make use of it. Okay, I've got that stock all milled up. So I'm just gonna get these glued in doesn't take a lot. This is just to keep the drawer from moving side to side. So it doesn't have to be pretty or... anything of that nature. Slide around on there a little bit. Make glue off of there. Now we're just going to clamp that up. And let her sit. Okay, I'm super happy with the drawer movement. Um, obviously, we have to get a backstop in it. Um, and I'm gonna do that before I start working on my reveals. Like, I'm tight on the top. I could use a little work here on the bottom. And this side needs a little bit of work. So I'll, I'll square those up with the smoothing plane. Um, but I need to get the stop in first so that I prevent it from going back too far and then we'll work on those reveals. Okay, so all I did there was set the drawer front to a place where it was fairly easy to work. Then I measured the gap and cut a piece to work as a drawer stop. Um, I have the drawer clamped as, as part of this but there's only glue on the table side. Okay, so there's the drawers, they're all fit in. They fit really nicely. Um, there's some little issues with my reveals and we're just gonna get those marked up a little bit, set in a smoothing plane. A lot of uh, make a few passes with smoothing plane and retest fit. And we're gonna see if we can get those dialed in to be a lot more consistent. Okay, so I think that that's, uh, that's a result I can live with. It, uh, the drawer slides nice, the reveal is nice, it really feels good, so I think I can live with that. Okay guys, well I took the uh, tops out of clamps this morning to uh, an unwanted surprise. 
Um, my own dumb fault, I actually left them in clamps too long. I think they were probably in there for three or four days. Um, long story short, they bowed on me. So I didn't want to lose too much of the thickness, so I went ahead and cut them again and reflattened, rejointed, and glued up, and, and now I'm happy with, with these panels. In fact, it's, it's hard to even find the seams, which is just awesome. The grain match worked out great. So, what I'm gonna do next is get them squared up. Um, and I think, I think we're gonna go for about 19 inches square to start. I can always come down from there, but I at least wanna look at it on the table at about 19 inches square. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. Okay, so these panels were actually too big to fit in my, my nice crosscut sled. So, I just set up my track saw, um, got a square out here, make sure that this is nice and square. And we'll go ahead and rip this off and then we'll do the other side at the table saw. Okay, well it's kind of a tight shot and it's hard to get the whole thing in perspective, but that's the angle that I've come up with for this undercut. So I'm just gonna set my bevel gauge and then go set up the table saw to that angle. Remember that standing up though. Okay, so the table saw is all set up. And really, even though I, I put marks on here to dummy proof this for me, because I'm a dummy, um, in the end, if you just always keep your top to the fence, you'll be fine, at least on, on a left tilting table saw. So, we're gonna give this a test run. Okay, I ended up with quite a bit of, of burning from the table saw, but it's just nothing that uh, a smoothing plane won't clean up or sanding would work as well. I just find it easier with the smoothing plane. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna use these figure eights to attach the top. I'm only gonna put two of them on. These just aren't gonna be moved all the time and, and tussled around. So two is plenty to keep the top on. Um, so all I'm gonna do is create a mortise for them with a Forstner bit. I think this is a three-quarter Forstner bit. Just like that. Okay, I've marked the locations on the underside of the top. All I'm gonna do is pilot drill. Okay, I'm using a uh, little Renaissance wax on this screw, as I usually do for screws. It's just impossible to get a good camera angle to show these going in, but all I'm doing is putting screws in those holes that we just pilot drilled. Okay, we got one last little task to do, and that's to locate for the drawer pull. So before I do all my finish sanding, I'm gonna go ahead and mark center on this drawer. Very light pencil marks. And go ahead and drill a hole. Well, there they are, guys. They just need some finish sanding and break the edges, etc. And then they'll be uh, ready for finish. So 
I'm going to spend the rest of the evening on, on getting them ready for finish, setting up the shop, and I'll start shooting finish tomorrow morning. But we're, we're nearing the finish line now. All right, well there they are guys, uh, all finished up. I think these should last in our house for a lot of years. I did about, oh, five coats on the bases of the waterborne finish, and I think I did six coats on the top, and I hand sanded with about 600 grit paper between. Um, I still need to wax the runners, but everything just functions so smooth. I'll probably wait till I get them in the house to do that, so super happy with them.